Hi, it's Andy, the GD Script Dude. In this video, we will complete the development of our GUI scene for our Tetris inspired game. Let's collapse this down a little bit, this structure we've got. And let's add a script to so we can add some code to get things going here. Like it's going to be GD scripts, of course, and it inherits the root node type, which is panel container. And it's saying default template. No, I don't want that. I want an empty one. And then the name is going to be GUI.GD, which is fine by me. So let's create it. Okay, here we are in the code. Now the first thing we want to do is to, let's think about what we want to do. Like this GUI is going to be used by the, the, the main scene. So it will want to like expose public properties, like for accessing the grid and the, the next shape that is going to be in there. So let's add in these some vars, var grid and var next all right so the the um the next thing we want to do is it implement the func ready function ready we'll get it auto complete there so do that and then we need to actually assign references to our exposed vars of grid and next so to do that we're going to go grid equals and we're going to find the node find a node even though we had a pretty complicated structure there in the GUI scene the find node drills down through it and finds the named node which is grid in our case for the grid so we can put that in there and the next is similarly done find a node and it is called the next I believe next come on um, next capital M next So how about running this scene? Oh, hold on a minute. Do pass maybe. Pass. And uh, put a break on that line. How about doing that? Will it work? Let's run. It's probably going to save something, so I haven't saved anything yet. Run the scene. Oh, we've hit the break point. And we can see next is there. It's got it. The next object is uh, a grid container and the grid is going to be a you can see it's a grid container as well so that's our first bit of code it's working very very nice stop and uh, what should we do next all right so what we're going to do next is add declarative code this is like we we don't haven't written we're not going to directly code everything immediately. We're going to think about what we want to do next. So what we want to do, uh, I said about it in the previous video, like in the scene, we need to add the grid elements. There's 200 of them because it's a matrix of 10 by 20. So it'd be nice to have a add cells function and input the dimensions of it but no not dimensions because the the we set it up already we we made it like tell it how the grid how many columns to have it just needs to know how many cells so we're going to add cells to a particular node like grid or next so we're going to add them to the grid. These are going to be input parameters to our function. And then how many 
nodes to add. How many cells to add? We can do that. So that's a nice thing to do there. And we haven't defined the function, right? The method, rather. So the func add cells. And in the inputs to this is a node, a node reference, and a number of cells. We could just call it n for now. Why not? And there's no code yet, just put pass in there. Let's see. The compiler says there's no errors anymore, so that's fine. Alright, so we that's gonna like populate our our main grid. And then there's another the thing we want to do. The cells are gonna be trans or not visible or or like darkened relative to the background. So the the new new shape when you initialize the scene of the GUI, it should probably have a black, like completely blanked out for the next shape. But the grid, we wanted to display a grid of empty cells, so we're gonna make it slightly off black for the background of those cells. So what we're gonna do is have a a clear cells function that we will create and input again the reference to where it is going in this case it's the grid and then we want to input the color that we want to use for the background how about calling it i like to use capitals for constants this will be constant cell underscore background one b u one all right, so that could be good. And what we want to do is define these two colors that we're going to use the, the very darkest background or the other one. We're going to use constants in this case. Use the const keyword, the name of the constant, and then equals is going to be color. And there's various choices of how to define a color. So I'm, I'm not, it's a bit difficult for me to use int from or string what name is the color. So I'm just going to go like uh, background one is going to be for the grid. It's be off, not quite black, but close to it. So how about this? We're going to input RGBs. We don't care about transparency, the A value. So we're just going to put red. <laughs> Let's make it almost black just see how we get on with that there's point one basically it's like a slider imagine between zero and one for like like black to white we're gonna make it like almost black but not quite so we can see the the cell position you know as a square and then we can do another one for the other one for the um the shape Let's call it cell background two bg2 equals color and let's just we can this time we can use integer because zero is going to be black completely black i.e not visible but taking up space so that um leaves us with the we need to create the cell clear cells function Let's go there and do it. Funk. Boing. And it's again, isn't it? The node and the color value coming in. The node that we want to apply it to and the value for the color, the background color. Okay. There we go. Nice. And Let's think, what do we want to do next? Do we actually create the code or do we do something else? Um, yeah, let's, uh, why not create this, the code? So, I've actually done this before for practice, <laughs> as a disclaimer. Because, yeah, anyway, let's go, let's uh, cut and paste the ad cells 
Uh, what am I doing? It's already done there. All right. Uh, the first thing to do for the adding of cells, we've already remember in the uh, the other tutorial we we actually added a few of them already. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to find out how many cells are already there by a variable num cells, and then we're going to access the node and then get the child count value how many cells are already in that grid okay and then we're gonna put some code in to cycle through those and add any extra ones that we need and it's quite simple we're gonna go while the number of cells is less than n let's tab this in a bit something yeah problem with cutting and pasting from another text file it uses spaces rather than tabs the old problem the old chestnut so we got tabs there tab tab okay so we got while the number of cells is less than n just check this hold on number of cells number of cells number of cells where's the n Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. That we inputted how many cells we want as n. So the number of num underscore cells is how many there are already. So while the number of cells is less than the number that we want, we're going to add, add one. We're going to add a child node. And the get child zero thing is, is already, it's going to take the cell that we already put there already in our scene and it's just going to duplicate it so we don't have to do anything too fancy we're just going to copy them basically duplicate them and keep going and we add one and then increment the number of cells the counts and then until it hits our required number of cells it will keep going and then after all the cells are added, like the 200 that we've said there, it will stop doing it and, and it will be done. And then in our responsive uh, scene where we use container nodes, it should expand out so we can see them all laid out nicely. All right, so that's the add cells, so we've done everything we need to do. Yeah, that, that is all of that function done. Uh, so the next one is clear cells. Clear cells. Oh, of course I've done this already, so let's cut and paste the code from that. Oh, we've done it there. So the actual, uh, the body code for this is replace the pass with this code. Again, it's we've got spaces. Let's get rid of our spaces tab. Has it, is it okay here? Let's check. Delete tab. Add another tab. Okay, so the clear cells it has the node that it's applying to, and then it's going to make the background color the the color that we input like black or not quite black so it's going to go through all of the cells within the, the grid node and make the way to make the the background and all the, the effect of the color change is to modulate you can see it in the in the inspector for the for a node you know you can modulate the color quite easily in this way. So we go cell.modulate property property equals the inputted color. So this is going to whiz through the the grid cells, all of them, and make them the color modulated by cell BG1, which is off black. Almost black, but not quite. All right, so that is that bit of code done. And what are we going to do next? We're going to add. We should add more to the ready function. So we we've handled the the grid. 
How about running the scene? What happens? What's going to go on here? Oh, look at that. It's worked. Although the size of this is not quite right. But yeah, you can see that our grid has got like a lot of cells. They're all black background. And then we ne the next thing we need to tackle is this one where we're going to make them disappear. Have I got these colors right? They're in the right way? I don't know, maybe. Let's see. Anyway, the next one is to, in the ready function, tackle the, the, the next grid. So we're going to clear the cells of the next grid. Let's do that. We don't need to add them because they're already there. So let's just clear them, clear the, clear them. Next, clear the cells of the next grid using this, this function here, clear cells. So we go, let's see what happens. See, it's worked. They've all disappeared. Perfect. So I think I'm gonna stop this tutorial now and in the next tutorial we will improve this and try to finish it off with uh, button responses in code and, and about dialogue which we need when we click on the about button so see you in the next video and please subscribe to my channel